Welcome to Shawlography, this year's Westnitz Mystery Shawl Knit Along. I am very excited for this year's Knit Along theme because we're going to embrace movement as our fingers are dancing through the sections of this year's shawl. So last year we did Slip Stravaganza, which was a lot of slip stitches with that main color constantly throughout the fabric. But this year we're going to shake it up by adding a fifth color. So this year's shawl uses five colors of fingering weight yarn, and you can find a lot of these color options as kits at Stephen and Penelope, or from your local yarn shop, or your favorite indie dyer. So these come as pre-selected kits to make that color choosing easy for you. But if you're working from your stash, you can do a lot of fun things by mixing single skeins together, because you only need one skein of each color. All right, so this year's shawl, it's fingering weight yarn, and we're gonna say yes and don't stress for this knit along. It doesn't have to be a certain type of fingering weight yarn. It can be a singles or a sock plied yarn. You can do wool or cotton or silk. So embrace different fibers and different yarn types, and we're gonna say yes, don't stress, but you have to pick five colors, okay? We're gonna make a quintet. So let's look at some color strategies of how all colors are going to interact for the shawlography pattern. So for the shawlography pattern, we're going to look at contrast. I'm going to show you some different color families in different ways to get a high contrast or low contrast shawl. I have here some beautiful Watt Collection Merlino colors, and this is one of my go-to palettes by using neutrals with some color pops. So if you're wondering what kind of colors you're gonna do for the shawlography, you might start with a statement color or your favorite color and use that as your inspiration. And you can never go wrong by mixing your favorite strong color pops with beautiful neutrals. Now what you'll notice about this palette is it's not too busy. The yarns are mostly solid and semi-solid. So if you're doubting what kinds of colors to work with this year, I would lean a little bit more into the solid, semi-solid colors because that's gonna for sure look absolutely gorgeous and really crisp and striking for the shawlography. If you want to go with some speckled yarns, that's okay too, but it's gonna be a little more blendy, okay? So it's not wrong, just say yes, don't stress. But if you're working with these speckled colors, like these three, these are really fady and really blendy, so I wouldn't use only these types of yarn qualities in the shawl, because then you're not going to see all the stripes and stitch pattern details. So if you do have some lightly speckled yarns, make sure you balance it with some solid or semi-solid contrast colors. So this would work really well, these Life in the Long Grass shades, and this is more of a blendy, low contrast option, okay? So we can go with neutrals with a pop for really crisp, clear, neutral framework with some spicy color pops dancing throughout the fabric. That's gonna look really nice. And if you go more blendy, make sure you have some grounding solids to anchor those lightly speckled yarns. And this will give you more of a shadowy effect. So really nice and neutral with that Life in the Long Grass palette. You'll notice here in my neutrals with a pop that there's a light medium, and a dark. And this is also quite light and bright. So that's a nice framework to ground your color choices, to get something really light, something medium, and something dark to ground the contrast. You don't have to do that, but this is a really nice strategy to know that it's gonna look really crisp and clear in the fabric. Light, medium, dark, and some pops. You can never go wrong. Let's look at that theory again with these Mominoki colors. So this isn't neutrals with a pop. This is more about embracing a color family. Now, if you're color shy, I would go towards one color family and stick in that territory. So these lovely pinks and reds, it's not all the colors of the rainbow. So this is a really nice safe color strategy to choose for shawlography by sticking in the color family and going light, medium, dark tones. And then you know it's gonna be harmonious, you know it's gonna look good, and uh, yeah, I promise it's gonna be gorgeous by sticking in the color family to have a safe, harmonious vibe. So here are those colors. We have something really light, some shades in the middle, and some really dark tones. If you're looking for that high contrast effect, something you could also do is take a picture of your yarns and put a black and white filter on them. And if you do that and notice that all your colors look like the same gray tone, then there's not much contrast going on. 
But I'm looking at these colors and I know I'm going to get contrast because this is really light, this is really dark, and I just love these juicy colors. So again, this is a really safe direction to go by sticking in a color family. Warm reds and pinks and light, medium, dark. All right, let's look at another color family. These are beautiful blues by Watt Collection, and you might have some gorgeous blue tones in your stash, and that can be your starting point for building a palette. Grab all the blues out of your yarn cabinet and fill them on the rug of your floor, and then start choosing some shades that you like together. These shades are really, really, really close, so it's gonna be a little bit blendy, which is okay, but this, I think, is a really important choice to break up the contrast a little bit. If all of your colors are this kind of darkness level, that, I think, is a little too similar. You need at least something to give you contrast for shawlography. And I'm a big fan of speckles, and it's hard to resist, so I threw this one in there, and that just gives a painterly splash, and that's gonna be okay. We have this light one to give us contrast, and it's still gonna be quite subtle, but uh, this light one really pops the contrast. And as you choose your five colors, don't worry about the color order, okay? Color A, B, C, D, E. It doesn't really matter for now. I'm going to guide you through the pattern when we start knitting in October, exactly which types of colors are gonna be good wear. So just get five colors together and start playing around with them. But that's a nice kind of low contrast color harmony going on with the blues. All right, if you're bold and brave with color, we can go with this kind of contrasty effect. I included a lot of photos and um, uh, descriptions when you sign up for the knit along. So when you sign up for Shawlography, you're going to get an intro PDF, and that includes some extra photos and the schedule and links and all that fun stuff. So it can guide you through with those color families. But I call this kind of color family a high contrast multicolor. And if you're going for a high contrast multicolor palette, you're gonna get a graphic quality with this dark and this light and a color pop and a different color pop. So this one's gonna be really for you knitters that are bold and brave with color. And these are some of my favorite types of palettes because you get to knit with so many different types of colors. I mean, I love the pinks and the harmonious vibes, but this is just so spicy. And whenever you work with colors in shawlography, you might be working with a couple, but when you see one color in one relationship, it's gonna behave differently somewhere else in the shawl. So the theme of the knit along is shawlography, so the colors are gonna be dancing. You might see three colors together, and then you might see a color duet happen, and then all the colors might dance together in the shawl. So if you're looking at your color choices, I would compare the contrast style to my Fantastitch shawl. We're not gonna be knitting Fantastitch, okay? Fantastitch is a design that's already out there, so this is not the mystery knit along, but it's a really good representation of how colors contrast and stripe together. So if you're picking your shawlography colors and thinking, ooh, these five colors would make a really cool Fantastitch vibe, then they're gonna look even better in shawlography, okay? I'm not giving away too many spoilers, okay? It's not gonna be like Fantastitch, but it's kinda gonna be like Fantastitch in terms of contrast. So you see how the colors mix and dance around where the gold is somewhere, and then the gold is shown in a different way later in the shawl. So that's the relationship to look for in shawlography. Colors moving and dancing with stripes and stitch patterns, is that, clear enough for you. There's gonna be maybe some stripes and maybe some stitch patterns. Yeah, it's gonna be a complete mystery for the shawlography process. You never know what shape is gonna happen or what stitch patterns are gonna come into play. But picking a beautiful palette that inspires you is gonna get you started. All right, let's see a few more color options. If you love purples, then go with purples and just work all the shades of that color family. So I really like this palette because it's so juicy, it's so harmonious, and we get a little bit of that light, medium, and dark contrast with some extra colors. And if you're picking colors for the mystery knit along and you're not quite sure if you made the right choice, just go with your gut and choose five colors. 
but maybe you could have a backup dancer come into your palette. So you need five colors to knit the shawl, but if you have any extra colors, just have them on the side as emergency options. You may even put some little mohair options as your backup dancers. <sighs> this is getting dangerous, okay? You don't, you don't need extra colors. You just need five, but with a West Knits Mystery Knit Along, you never know what's gonna happen, and you might see somebody else's shawl where they had this beautiful palette, and then they put this surprise mohair pop in it. So you're allowed to do that, but don't worry about it for now. Just have it as backup dancers. You can have some understudies. You have your main characters for your mystery shawl, but maybe there's an understudy that's just hanging out in the wings of the stage. It might make an appearance if you feel like it, but uh, I'd rather be having those options as extra if you're starting to doubt your color choices. But we have a whole month to prepare for your colors, so there's plenty of time to change your mind and work with a beautiful color palette that inspires you. So this is another type of color palette I put together because it comes in these 50 gram balls. This is Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino. And if you have yarn that comes in 50 gram balls, just know that you'll need two balls, okay? You need 100 grams of each color. So depending on how your yarn comes, if it comes in 50 grams, you're gonna need two balls. These come in 100 gram skeins. So one of these equals two of these balls. But 100 grams, 100 grams of each color. This is a cotton yarn, cotton merino from Knitting for Olive, and it's okay to use different fibers. So I'm a sucker for wool, but if you like cotton, you could do a cotton or an alpaca, get a silk blend that would be really lovely. And this is another yarn I really, really love because the color palette is so immense. This is Holstgarn from Denmark, and this is more of a non-superwash rustic quality. So just say yes, don't stress. You can use all types of fingering weight yarn. And this is a really beautiful example of a harmonious color palette, light, medium, dark, and a couple extra colors. You're gonna get really good contrast. Okay, so you've picked your colors, you've dove into your stash, you've got uh, 16 options that you've narrowed it down to. We gotta get to five, okay? A final five color choice. A great way to test and audition your shellography colors is to do a lazy swatch. And we included these lazy swatch tools in every mystery knit along kit at Stephen and Penelope. And if these tools are sold out, um, I have them in hand here, but uh, the kits sometimes sell out really fast. So if you don't see these lazy swatch tools right now, we're gonna be getting them again. But these are tools where you can wrap the yarn around the tool and then it's a good way to see how colors contrast. And this is really fun because you see the yarns individually in big percentages. It's a big block of color in the skein. But once you start to wrap your colors, the relationship starts to change. So this is a really easy way to get a sense of how your colors are contrasting. And if they're too subtle or too soft, you can wrap a new color around your lazy swatch. So we made these cute tools, but if you also wanna just wrap it around some cardboard or any other object at home, you can play with that lazy swatch technique. But this is what they look like, and we designed these lazy swatches also to serve as a gauge swatch. So that distance between the bars of the lazy swatch is four inches, 10 centimeters. So if you wanna measure a gauge swatch, you can do a swatch if you want, but honestly, it's not necessary to do a gauge swatch, okay? Just get the recommended needle. Um, when in doubt, uh, you can just choose a fabric that feels really good to you. And I'm gonna be giving you yardage notes throughout the pattern to make it easy and step-by-step, step, you can follow along with all the instructions. But October 8th is the cast-on date. So we've got a while to pick your dream color palette. And when you sign up on Ravelry or on gumroad.com slash westknits, you'll get the intro PDF and you'll get automatic pattern updates. So we're gonna knit a surprising brand new shawl, the shawlography in October. Who knows what stitches are gonna take place. We didn't do brioche last year. Are we gonna do it this year? I don't know. If there's brioche though, there's gonna be a non-brioche option, okay? So don't worry. I'm gonna give you video tutorials along the entire way 
So if you're more adventurous beginner level knitter, I'm going to teach you all the techniques you need to know. So gather some yarn, participate. You can check out some color options at stephenandpenelope.com or go to your local yarn shop and uh, find a kit from your favorite indie dyer as well and dive into your stash, add some little mohair, color opportunities if you're feeling brave and it's going to be a fun knit along full of dancing colors. So I'll see you soon.